actually, my presentation is also very similar to the previous one. Uh, it's, it's about surgical treatment of Coats disease. And uh, it's an endothelium parasite disease, as you know, and it causes exudative retinal detachment. And uh, we, uh, we will be dealing with uh, stage 3 uh, B uh, detachments. Uh, I also do external drainage, but uh, associated with cryo and sometimes laser, and with anti-VEGF or steroids. And this is my technique. This was a nine-month-old boy uh, with stage three beast coats. You see the drainage. I do the uh, conjunctival peritomy, and uh, you see I do the drainage. Uh, just behind the uh, muscle insertion area and from an area where the uh, uh, retina is highly uh, detached. And I put a trocar uh, into the uh, pars plana area. So I give some uh, BSS through that trocar and when I need it because I don't put the infusion there routinely because when I deviate the eye, it may uh, harm the lens. Uh, and I drain it uh, again and again uh, while giving some fluid uh, into the vitreous cavity. So you see retina is going backwards uh, with time. And then uh, we can use this uh, trocar uh, for a chandelier and to see if the retina is uh, okay or not. And we can use this chandelier to apply uh, some laser or cryo to the retina. Uh, so it, it's a multi-purpose uh, entry. So as you see here, retina is now uh, almost attached. And then I usually start cryo at, the, at this stage. And if I see that retina is uh, in some places, you see telangiectatic vessels which are very crowded and in the... Um, contracted retina, and then you can put some direct laser during the surgery. Uh, not indirect, but direct laser, just towards the telangiectatic vessels, in addition to uh, this cryotherapy. And at the end of the surgery, this was the post-op two months picture. You see retina was attached, and uh, this was Two, uh, nine months post of uh, appearance of the same case. So retinal state attached. This is another case with, again, stage uh, 3B, retinal detachment exudative, and this is the post of appearance. Another case uh, during the uh, surgery, and this is the post of appearance. So we have, uh, this is the OCT of one of the cases. So we have done this to five eyes. Uh, with this triple surgery, with this triple surgery, and uh, we have seen some subretinal fibrosis in two of them, probably because of the disease itself, or also may, it may be also because of the uh, tri uh, cryo. So combined transcleral subretinal fluid drainage uh, with cryotherapy and intravitreal bevacizuma provides anatomical success of stage three B cause disease without the need of vitrectomy in most of the cases. Thank you. Um, I'd like to congratulate both presenters. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, the, I published in 2009 online and then in the BGO 17 cases done in a similar way. Uh, we do the infrotemporal um, modified vertex decompression. We, we just take off 90% of the square thickness in one by one centimeter uh, scleral window. Transcleral drain. Um, uh, inject Kinacort at the time, 2009. It was like a series of 17 patients or with three years follow up. And uh, eventually, in three to, weeks, three to four weeks' time, after dry drying up of all the subretinal fluid, we went back do doing laser. Um, so the, the, I'm glad like, that seven years later, this method proved to be the right way of dealing with coats, which is an exclusive detachment, and it has to be dealt with externally and not internally. I appreciate also the comment that we are not draining retinoblastoma cells. So sometimes the, the, the difference is, is, is really trivial between a, a, an RB case and the Coates case. So if, we are, if you have one in a million doubt, I would prefer enucleating the eye. So this is mm. the other very important message. Otherwise, we will be killing the kid 
you know, yeah. if, they, if that doubt is put. Thank you, Ihab. Thank you. I'm Sangeet Mithul from India. Uh, just a small comment, uh, I'm doing a similar technique, but I use a Venflon cannula to drain the thing. When you insert this, you can remove the stillet and leave the plastic thing inside, so it's less traumatic to the retina if it touches. What gauge, what gauge are you using? Gauge. Yes. There's a, a very nice poster as well. On uh, tw using 26 uh, gauge uh, angiocath or uh, uh, venous catheter for draining subretinal fluid by Dr. Al Abdullah from uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Basically, uh, I, I'm Abdullah Al Abdullah from Saudi Arabia. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, I totally agree with the with the um, method of drainage. However, I'm using AC maintainer and, and this technique. So um, even if there is no space in the vitreous to introduce stroker or a needle, so AC maintainer will help to maintain and push the the fluid through the um, the cannula. Thank you. One, one short uh, question. What is the rationale for anti-VGF for you? Because these are vessel abnormalities and there might be controversy about uh, whether they respond to anti-VGF because we're not dealing with neovascularization. Can you comment on that? Uh, since these are parasite diseases and since it's just exudation, we know that VEGFs are the most potent vascular permeability agents. Anti-VEGFs may help in uh, that aspect, preventing that vascular permeability. That's, uh, that's the uh, point for me. Dr. Kaur, do you have any, any comment on this point? We do not use anti-VEGF. We prefer to use intravitreal tramsil alone if required. No anti-VEGFs. So if, if I may have a quick comment on this. The, uh, it's a form of telangiectasia. So anti-VEGF was uh, used, found to be useful in macular telangiectasia type 1 and being a form of telangiectasia, this is the initial thought. Back, like 10 years back, the, the tramsil alone was, was in vogue and this is the initial use, I think, in the published paper as well. So it's Thank being, you.